Scorpions are lazy boys. They are among the lowest metabolisms ever recorded of any animal. According to The Biology of Scorpions, a book from 1990, they spend 92 to 97% of their lives almost completely inactive. And their foraging style, hunting for food, is just waiting until prey crosses their path. Oh, just imagine if you could live your life like that. Just 70 or so years just waiting for food to happen. <laughs> Scorpions! Hello and welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections and pinch them with the pincers of objectivity? And then I tell you what's going up next on this channel. Hint, it's another superpower that I guess I'm going to ruin for you. But if you mean ruin by better, that's what I think is gonna happen. But getting right into it, in the last episode of Because Science, what we were talking about is what actually happened to Tony Stark in Endgame. And a lot of you had a lot of wonderful comments on the video in the YouTube comments section. I love the discussion that was happening down there. And usually I would go into those comments, questions, and corrections right now, except you may have been wondering why I was talking about scorpions. That's because, oh, this is a weird segue, that's because I have a very special guest with me for this edition of Footnotes, Alan Pan. Hi, hi, Kyle. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Coming in hot. You're here today because we're finally going to be addressing all of the comments and mostly corrections on our Science of Mortal Kombat series. Finally. Finally. That's why we were talking about Scorpion. So what I thought might be fun is to go through episode by episode from one to six and see what the top comment or correction was for each one of them. And then we can address all the haters and the lovers out there. Yay. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> So glad you're here. So why don't we just <laughs> go right into it and we'll start with the first episode. What did you ha say, say, say this with me. Say, what oh, did you have to say? Okay. What, what did, did you, you have, have to, to say? say? Only good things. That's not true. Well, the first episode of the Science of Mortal Kombat was the Sub-Zero Head Shatter with Daniel Cormier, where he totally obliterated a head. And the top comment is, this blonde guy looks a lot like Thor that never made the cut. <laughs> That's you. They're talking about you. <laughs> Very funny. Fine. Like, okay, let's go to the next, uh, the top comment after that is, why does Kyle look like Felicity Smoke from Arrow, but with a beard? That's also you. They're also talking about you. <laughs> let's continue. The top correction that I could find from this episode is from Enera, who says they only half froze the skull, so they could only freeze uh, half of it and then smash half of it, therefore. But I love the series nonetheless. All right, so I got this correction from a lot of people is that it didn't seem like we froze the entire head and therefore there was no possibility of it completely shattering like we see in Mortal Kombat 11. Like we only froze ha half the head? Yes. We kind of froze the whole, we kind of froze that whole head. Well explain the process for the viewers. Yeah, part. so uh, when, when we froze that, that uh, ballistics gel head, we lowered it from a pulley into sort of a trash can full of liquid nitrogen because- The best as, storage space. For as it turns out, if you ever need to put liquid nitrogen in something, uh, polypropylene is a really good material for cryogenic temperatures. So really, if you just like go around a, a, a hardware store, you just need to find a container that's got that PP recycling symbol at the bottom. Don't use styrofoam, that, that stuff is just awful. It'll crack and explode and it's terrible. Knowledge that you can use. Yeah, we had a garbage can filled with liquid nitrogen and we lowered the head. It was uh, literally of, a garbage can. It was literally a garbage can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we lowered the head uh, top of the skull first down into there, it was it was submerged pretty much, I'd say, up to like mouth level. Yeah, so, you know, that's not the entirety down to the neck, but what people didn't see, I don't think, is that the head, the ballistic gel head that we use, running down from the neck all the way to like the base of the skull, had a hollow tube through it. Yeah. Um, so you could mount it on something like a pipe. The liquid nitrogen was also going into that tube yeah. and freezing the entirety of the head because when we took it out, you could see it almost coming out of the tube uh, in the form of nitrogen gas. Yeah, one, one of the things that uh, I don't think made it in because it was like a huge logistical problem was that the head, when it froze, 
uh, would like start cracking just from thermal shock. Just from the yeah. thermal shock of freezing, the skull would develop a bunch of cracks, and then that meant that the skull, since it's empty inside, would actually fill with liquid nitrogen. And so then yeah. the problem was, if we hoisted it up out of the garbage can, there would still be liquid nitrogen in the skull, and it was like dripping out of the cracks, and that's not something that we could safely punch. No. Because then if it did shatter, which it ended up doing, we would also be spraying liquid nitrogen all over the set. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that with someone whose fists are worth millions of dollars. <laughs> Literally millions of dollars. So yeah, and there's another component to this, right? I mean, the reason why some of the things that we did are because of production, which people don't always think about. When you yes. have high profile talent, for example, you cannot ask them to do just anything. And you may have like literally 30 minutes to say hello, tell them what they're doing today, ask them to do the thing, and then they're gone. Yeah. There's no reshoots, there's no nothing. So for something like this, we took our best shot with freezing the head, and then we just hoped that this amazing MMA fighter who was gonna show up would just destroy this thing. And that's what ended up happening, but it could have gone the other way too. He was very good at punching. He was he very was good at punching. Extremely good at punching things. Yeah. On this one, I think I think this is probably the most clear cut one out of all of them. I, I, don't, I don't know how much we could have done differently in this one specifically, maybe filled the head with meat or, or something, but given that the skull was actually cracking from thermal shock with some kind of fleshy thing around it, that only helps the fatality because yeah. your skull might crack. Speaking of thermal shock too, there was a paper that came out about Pompeii that showed that the skeletons, uh, their brains actually uh, evaporated, created enough pressure inside their skull to crack their skulls. Oh. That, wow, okay, that's a fatality right there. That's a fatality right there. So skull cracking's a real thing. It can make the head more shatterable. Eh, I'm fine with this one. The main thing that I would take away from this is that just because the entire head was not fully submerged in liquid nitrogen doesn't mean that the head, the whole head did not freeze. Because even if we're only going up to like mouth level here, even if we're not like getting the chin in the liquid nitrogen, being that close to liquid nitrogen is still super duper cold. And yeah. we're just trying to freeze this head solid. We're not trying to get the entire head to cryogenic temperatures. Although eventually, if we're assuming like a perfectly insulated closed system, it would even if just part of it is submerged in liquid nitrogen. Yeah, we're not yeah. like assuming heat flow into it. Heat flow is a real thing. You can't always see it on camera, but things that don't look very cold can sometimes be very, very cold. Yes. And things that don't look very, very hot can be extremely hot, as we will get into a couple episodes from now. The next episode of the Science Mortal Kombat was Scarlet's Blood Spikes. And by far, the top two comments uh, or corrections um, were, why didn't you use real blood? And why didn't you freeze the blood? So oh, we're boy. trying to make projectiles out of blood that we could launch into a torso. And uh, most people said you should have froze it. All right, so this one. Why didn't you freeze it, Alan? I take full responsibility for this one. Kyle actually suggested freezing those darn icicles first. Bloodsicles, making them actual bloodsicles. I was against that idea because at that point, we were just freezing a lot of things in this series. And also, it wasn't, it's not, Scarlet's not freezing the bloodsicles. She's using her magic, her yeah. effect effectively psychic magic to hold liquid blood in a solid shape. It's not the same as freezing it. No, and, 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 and you know, even though my first suggestion was freezing, I did agree with Alan in the end because I'm positive that if we froze blood, that we would just get the opposite comment. Her yeah, blood isn't sub-zero powers, why did you freeze the blood? You should have put it in like some kind of bullet or something like that. Also, it's not like, I, I don't know if, if really the result would have been any different because you know, even if we had frozen the same amount of, of blood or blood analog, it's still the same mass and it's still, if anything, uh, either the same hardness or maybe even a little softer if we're doing like actual blood. I don't know how many of you guys out there have played with frozen blood, because I have. It's very popsicle -y, like a, Yeah, it's, like a it's, not, it's not like pure water. It's, yeah, because yeah. there's so much just other stuff in blood. It doesn't really freeze solid at normal freezer temperatures. If we're talking like, you know, zero Celsius, it's still like, you know, you could you could bite into it and it would, it would kind of come apart. Uh, there's a good chance that if we shot a frozen blood popsicle that it just would have come apart under the stress. That, that's entirely possible. So, you know, even if we were assuming that we had frozen bloodsicles and then launched them out the same way, I 
don't think the result would have been terribly different. That's my my hypothesis. Yeah, I think I think the rigidity of the plastic would help it penetrate more so than just shattering the front end of a bloodsicle and having the rest of it just kind of smoosh behind it. Yeah. Also, the, the bloodsicles when when they hit our target, they exploded. Our red dye food colored water ended up everywhere. Everywhere. If that had been actual blood. Oh yeah, that's a that's a health hazard. Yeah, really. just just from just apart from being like gross and yeah. really hard to clean up, that's like a straight up biohazard situation when you've just aerosolized pig's blood or whatever kind of blood and yeah. then just gotten it everywhere. And also, just again, this is going to be a common theme, but production and making things. Uh, we're working with Warner Brothers, which is a very large company that cares about their image, so we cannot just use anything and do anything with it. You, ha you would have to say, hey, you with a very high paying job, do you, can you let us use pig's blood and shoot it at a naked body? <laughs> No, no, of course not. We're trying to sell things. There's a whole side component of this stuff that uh, you may not be seeing, which is why Alan and I went with a beautifully 3D printed, by the way, Thank you. blood projector Thank that, I, you. that I still have in my home. I'm just waiting to use it. Little weird, but okay. Our next episode is Sub-Zero's Ice Axe. So okay. Alan and I were trying to make an axe out of nothing but ice, and when that didn't work, we tried to make an axe out of pycrete. One of the top comments is, this series is like Mythbusters, but lazier and completely inaccurate. Oh, good. That's <laughs> That's exactly what we were aiming for. Yeah, people actually. think we're lazy. <laughs> I'm glad that's, that's the thing that that's across. the thing that gets me the most. That's what we were going for, absolutely. Yeah, yeah wow. we 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 involved uh, literally dozens of people, weeks worth of work, if not months, and a lot of money just to you know whatever. Yeah, I mean, this is not very very low effort. Yeah, who cares? Here, yeah, the the 8K cameras. I mean, you don't <laughs> you only bring those if you don't really give a crap. But by far the top uh, correction would be that axe didn't look look very sharp, more like a pointed hammer, and I, I'm guessing they're referring to the Pycrete Axe. Yeah. Why didn't we sharpen a frozen paper towel into the kind of edge that metal can hold, Alan? The, the thing about Pycrete is that it's, uh, it's like very bad wood. It's like crappy wood. So if you can imagine... It's like, wood pulp. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it, that's what, it's literally some form of wood pulp that is bound and frozen together with, with water. So if you imagine taking like a softwood, like imagine like pine or something, yeah. and then trying to make an ax head out of that that is sharp enough to cut through a human neck, that's a challenge. It, like you could maybe you could come to a fine point, but that edge is not going to be uh, hard enough to actually like make it through yeah. any material of substance. Well, yeah. What makes a really good sword or sword material is that it can hold an edge, and it's very hard at that edge. So it's not ductile enough that it's just going to change shape upon impact and not have that small area to deliver the high pressure, which is cutting pressure. This isn't a perfect analogy, but imagine if you had a sword edge made of like play-doh, and even even if you swung it super hard, when the edge hits, it's gonna, and the edge is gonna uh, move out of the way, so to speak, because it's not very hard. Similarly, imagine like chopping up plywood in a wood chipper and then putting some water in it and freezing it together and then trying to sharpen that to a fine edge. It's not that we didn't sharpen it intentionally, <laughs> it's that it's incredibly hard to do that at all. All. So we tried to just put our version of some kind of edge on it because we knew we couldn't make it into like a God of War axe or something. And then we hit that dang thing. I think we didn't expect that it did almost literally nothing to the head. I was I was honestly kind of expecting that. I mean, oh. I've played around with Pycrete quite a bit now, and like uh, the, the thing to really keep in mind is that Pycrete is just really bad wood. So you can't imagine making a bladed weapon that can cut through something out of like a soft wood, yeah. then Pycrete's not gonna be able to do that either. Yeah. I, I and also that. anything that's like well established as a real material that's as close to still kind of being ice as Pycrete. Anything right. else is gonna be so far away from ice that we're not really testing ice anymore and then we might as well just get a real ax and do it. We could have made like a like a clear solid like resin ax head that might have performed better and would have looked Looked kind of like ice, but at that point, but it wouldn't be ice at all. Yeah, at that point, so. you might as well just like, hey, let's see if we can cut a head off with an axe. We know that's possible. You can do it. Why didn't we do that? I don't want you swinging an axe. Are you kidding me? Uh, the next episode of the Science of Mortal Kombat was the famous "Get Over Here" spear, and by far the top correction on that for Alan and I, like one from Joshua Rainas, who says, uh, "Flaws in your plan. Mm. The line was too slack at the start of the pull, and you're pulling from the front of the person when the spear would be in the middle of the person, or even from." the back.
back. That would have changed how the force is applied a lot. Well, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't consider the, the slackness of the line. I don't think that's like a huge... That's a huge... Well, what, where, my reasoning for the slack of the line and doing more like a... Uh, tug of war approach, that's it, <laughs> to make a machine that would supply a constant pulling force across like 15 feet with 200 pounds on the end of it seems undoable. And I know it is undoable because we'd have grappling hooks that could ascend you up buildings like Batman, which we don't have. We're coming close, but we don't have anything like sort that. Sort of do, sort of do. Not fast, fast. Yeah, uh, anyways. Uh, so You I can't mean, pull a person across the room without their feet touching the ground with a current grappling hook system is, is what I'm getting. The thing that comes to mind would be like, they do have like really powerful winches for like launching gliders, like unpowered gliders to actually get them in the air if they're not being towed by another airplane. They have to get up somehow. And so you can actually get like a very powerful winch that does, you know, is capable of accelerating something that is pretty heavy and, you know, undergoing wind resistance. But you, you have to kind of make the assumption that Scorpion was able to like, with his bare arms, launch an entire glider into the air on his own. Eh, maybe. Which, I don't, yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's a super person. I don't know canonically how powerful his demon arms are, but that's just asking for a lot. Like you're you're talking about like like tying a rope to a Cessna, basically, and then like throwing it into the air from a stand. Woo! Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a there's a bigger problem. No matter how we are pulling it, whether it starts slack or it's a constant acceleration force, is that if you do not do it in a short enough time, mm. because of gravity, the person is going to have their face hit the ground and they're gonna slide along the ground. When you're like your Cessna example, they have wheels that keep them on the ground and then they go. If you had them, for example, on a 10 foot high platform and did the same thing, they would go, uh, and then they would continue on like that. So that's why I wanted to get at more of a single giant force that mm. would pull someone across the room. Now, mm. as far as placement, I, I don't know if I agree with this with this criticism. We're pulling from the front of the person, yes, but maybe what you didn't see as much in the video is, is that they're wearing a full body harness. So if it's connected right near the center of mass of that person, in theory, it is pulling on all of that person at once. I mean, construction workers are in these kinds of harnesses that we use and they arrest their falls from like 10 feet or something and they pull a couple of G's, it is affecting their entire body when so they do this. They're, they're saying that the, that we, that we're pulling from the front, but the, the spear would actually be like embedded in them? Well, Is yes, the, the spear is embedded in them yeah. when Scorpion does it. No, yeah, I mean, it's basically the same thing, yeah. The harness is attached to the entire person. I, I think it's pretty much the same whether or not the person has a whole body harness or if they physically have a spear that is stuck. Well, in imagine if you had a spear that went into someone's body, went like and then connected on the back and you pulled them. This is the same as having straps all the way around your front and back and then pulling at some point of that. And that's what a full body harness is. So I think it's, it's fine. The it's the same thing. The bigger, the bigger problem is not having enough force to move that person quickly enough. And you can see the real difference. If uh, when Big Dave was pulling mm -hmm. something, it was just 20 pounds and you pull it the exact same way, then you get a, a get over here style, style pull. And it, it's the mass that's the problem. Our next episode of the Science Mortal Kombat was can you uppercut someone off of the ground? No, it's really hard to uppercut. It's in really have problems with this. Andy Mies, who says, uh, why would you create a realistic head, then, but then put 90% of the weight on the floor, making it even more difficult to get it moving in an upward direction? This one was pretty bad. Didn't we literally address that like in the video, though? Like In the video, we were like, oh, whoops, we shouldn't have put all the weight in the feet. Let's readjust the weight so that's in the video that's like in there it, it was am i taking crazy pills it was in the video it was in the video but i mean this this one is probably the one that is the closest to just straight up impossible because of how the human body is if it was a point mass if we put a spherical a spherical person. a bowling ball kind of thing on the end of our po punching robot and just punched it, and we we hung it from a string and just went, ha! Yes, it would do some kind of parabolic trajectory. But a person with most of their mass not above the neck, and the neck has serious flexure, and serious. it can move out of the way, if you punch someone in the neck or face even perfectly, the head's coming off, the neck is gonna break, or they're gonna move backwards. Going up like a rocket is not something the human body wants to do. Even if you hit the body hard enough to uppercut it through the air, because of where the human center of mass is, I'm pretty sure you'd start uh, flipping in 360s along the center of mass, like, oh! 
oh. Which would be amazing. Yeah, like if you throw a tennis racket, it always spins about the center of mass. That's still. almost, that'd be almost like a better animation than what you see in like the legit Mortal Kombat game where it's like, the <laughs> we're just like, whoa, I'd like to see that. So I would also like to see that. There, right? We're going to do that kind of thing. And let me also point out that in some of the brutalities or some of the fatalities, especially in Mortal Kombat 11, you can just uppercut someone so hard that their head actually just does fly off. That's a lot more realistic. It's a lot more realistic. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say that that was, if we were, if we were rating sort of ways to die in Mortal Kombat on a physical realism scale, that's pretty high up there. What about being shot so hard that you fly upwards into a helicopter's blades? <laughs> That's lower on the on the that's scale. Lower that's, on the that's scale. Kinda, that's lower on the scale. Do you know how much kinetic energy those bullets would have to have rise to, someone uh, up into the air? They'd have to dump all of that energy into your body instead of just pass. Because at that point, the bullet's going to go right through your body. It's not going to really. Impart it's imparting anything. very little. Yeah. So it'd have to it'd have to like be crazy. Have to hit your body, embed itself perfectly, such that it stops moving and all of that energy goes into your body. Like if you ever taken physics 101, it's the classic bullet in the wooden block. Yeah, God, that, that, oh, yeah, that's the worst. You that's the that worst fatality. Yeah, that's that's a bad one. So the final episode of the Science of Mortal Kombat was Scorpion's Heated Chain. And this was by far the most controversial one. It was? Uh, oh, oh good yes. Good thing that was the last one. Good thing. <laughs> yeah. By far the biggest correction on this video with six Almost 7,000 upvotes. Wow. Which is a lot. Was uh, from Patrick uh, Satiadi, who says, Doesn't Scorpion use force when he splits his opponents with his chain? So, what they're getting at is we laid the chain over the top of our body analog, and then we just were trying to figure out if it was to burn through. What everyone is saying is that if we would have pulled the chain while it was yeah, burning yeah. down, it may have done something different. And there was even, I don't know if you've Seen this, Alan? Oh, I've seen it. No, yeah, that, but there was even emailed me that link. I saw it. Yeah, they emailed me too. So we'll put it up right here. But this guy um, actually used uh, he he heated a chain up red hot, and then he put it on a ham hock. And then once the chain is down, he does a sawing motion with the chain. I mean, it's beautiful. I, and I, you can see it going in. You can see it definitely going into the flesh. I really wish that uh, we could have done something this gross. It, it's it's fantastic. It's a beautiful demonstration. Now what he's showing is that basically we're wrong. <laughs> in that if you have some kind of pulling force, then it would make it through a body. I mean, yes. However, no, however, yeah. however, I think there is something subtle and very important going on, and I, I tweeted uh, him about this. I asked, hey, why did you use the sawing motion? Why, instead of pulling, why instead of wrapping it around and then pulling through, like Scorpion does in the Fatality, why did you put it on and then sawed it yes, like this? why indeed. Why indeed. And uh, he's like, I don't know, it kind of looks like there's a sawing motion, and I only had one ham hock. <laughs> See, production, it matters a lot. <laughs> I only had one, I had to do something. But what I think the sawing motion is doing, Alan, is exactly what I said the problem was. Mm -hmm. If the chain isn't hot enough to vaporize material out of the way, right. my reasoning was that the chain wouldn't go through anything because material's still there. It's getting hot, it's burning, it's still there. What I think this sawing motion is doing is getting the flesh hot enough to start you know, deteriorating, mm -hmm. and then the sawing motion is actually removing yeah. the material that is being affected like vaporizing would do. I would yeah. want to see this chain put on the ham hock and then just you know, put a 100 pound weight on it. Just just, just, just pull on it. I would very much guess that unless you held it there for many, many seconds and pulled with a, a lot of force, it would not do very much of anything. Yeah. Because Scorpion pulls all at once, it's around them, it's burning, burning, burning. Hut! Cut in half. I think that's the subtle difference here. If you're sawing material out of the way, yeah, that's I mean, what a saw does. You're essentially, you're using the chain links like a really- Like little saw teeth. Like yeah. saw teeth, and it, each each pass would move some of the fat out of the way. Yeah. While, while I love that we did something controversial enough that they had to yeah, make a video so, about it, and, I, and get a hundred, uh, almost uh, 150. 126,000 views? Just okay. because we were so wrong. Wow, that's wow. actually really cool. Yeah, good, good for you. Well, because of all, like like I think my 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 usual like comeback to people and they're like oh why didn't you do that it's like oh well let's see you do it better and this guy yeah, went and did good. it yeah, it's pretty and good he got some views no I absolutely like, I absolutely appreciate it I did a thing on YouTube uh, took it upon himself to test it out and I think that this is a good test of another interpretation of it I just think yeah. it is different than our interpretation of it that's what all of this comes down to yeah our interpretation of a magical fictional thing Alan and I had to work really hard with a 
sh in a short amount of time no, to do it. was very lazy. To, to, it was very lazy. Just put our feet uh, up and just do that. <laughs> to do our best with a short amount of time with with clients and money and people. And I, I stand by what we did. I think it was very cool. I, I I'm proud of it. This one's a little bit harder to feel completely 100% sure with than the other ones. Um, it does make me happy to to see this. I mean, I do agree. Like honestly, I think if you, I think if you had the chain moving fast enough, it would cut through flesh without even being hot. And like, then you're, but then you're describing a bandsaw. Yeah, or, or a, a chainsaw, if you will. Is that why they call it that? <laughs> oh! But again, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow, yeah, I did not like, even think of that. It's not, I mean, it's one thing if if Scorpion is standing there with his like boot in the person's back doing this. <laughs> It, yeah, it's through like that is what, but it's like it's it's like the uh, it's more of it's, it's more yeah it's like and this is definitely more, more of fun. like a cheese cutter situation yeah. where if you had a thin wire and then you went you wrapped it around and pulled it might make it through a person or, or you know you garrot wired someone's head off like it, I think is in some previous yeah, Mortal Kombat's yeah. but I think this is different I like what you did I did a thing and I guess I guess even though you definitely disagreed with us I'm gonna do something crazy here and I'm gonna say I did a thing you are indeed oh I want you to do this in a second. I did a thing, you are indeed a super nerd. Ah! Look at us. But now, Alan, if you'll bear with me for just a second, the next episode of Because Science is why you do not want to be immortal. Alan, do you think you'd want immortality? Oh yeah, absolutely. Why, why? Oh, you're gonna be so silly feeling after <laughs> this week's episode because we're going back to our You Don't Want X Superpower series, this time with immortality. Yes, oh, you don't want teleportation. What? Yes, you don't, I do. You don't want to be invisible. You don't want x-ray vision. You don't want super strength. You don't want super speed. I want all of those You do not, don't. you are incorrect, and you're also incorrect about immortality, I think. Don't take this away from me. That's, that's my whole career. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science. If you haven't yet all about Tony Stark and what actually happened to him when he snapped the Infinity Gauntlet, stay tuned this week for You Don't Want Immortality. And leave me all of your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions on youtube.com slash because science. I don't know where it's going to be. Facebook.com slash because science and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. And before we leave you, since Alan is here, a wonderful man, you got something going on that I want you to tell people about. Yes, I just started my own makerspace. If you don't know what a makerspace is, it's like a, a gym kind of a model. There's like a monthly membership, but yeah. it's like for nerds. So like, instead of a treadmill, it's got like a laser cutter. Yeah. Like a CNC routing table and yeah. printers. It's really cool stuff. You, you could even go there if you want to right now. I did save it from shutting down. So it was previously called Hex Lab Makerspace. I want to rebrand it into Sufficient Space because that's like my YouTube channel, Sufficiently Advanced. Yes. But uh, we we need tools. Um, it's a makerspace, we need tools. And we also need programming to teach kids STEM uh, classes, free STEM classes for the kids in the community. And that, that, costs, that costs the money. So I have a Kickstarter that's currently going on. If you go to Kickstarter and just look up Sufficient Space, you'll find it. If you like cool stuff, if you like making stuff, if you like teaching kids yes. for free, who doesn't? Who doesn't like that? Go ahead and check out that link. Go to Kickstarter. Uh, look at Sufficient Space if, if that's the sort of thing you're into. Uh, maybe share, maybe Push a little money that way. Yeah, maybe uh, and Alan is an extremely talented maker. I love everything that he does, everything that he makes, and beyond that, teaching kids, having a space for people to come and learn about how to make things like he does, and all the other stuff you love watching. Uh, that's sciencey stuff on YouTube. They do all that. Um, supporting the local community critically important uh, to getting science and STEM out there. It can't just be us. It has to be everyone uh, if we're going to tackle the biggest problems of the day. And you know, watch all the stuff that we've done together, and we'll do together in the future, probably. Wow, I'm blushing. That was so good. That was a better, that was a much better pitch than what I said. And I only, yeah. it only took me like two seconds to come up with it. <laughs> and finally, don't forget. Alan, you have any words of wisdom you want to share with the community? Uh, words of wisdom, um, was there supposed to be something nope. here? Just, okay. Put uh, you on the spot. Make, make sure that you try everything that we do at home. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's the opposite of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mouth is a little ahead of my uh, brain there. Um, what Alan meant to say was, if you like what we do, you should, uh, you should instead of doing it at home, you should go to a makerspace, learn how yeah, to do it, and then yes. do it. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, stay, stay safe and stay in school, kids. <laughs> Killing it.